Calculate slope from graphs. This is part two of six videos about slope, which is also part of the family of functions series. You may need graph paper or you can download this PDF and print it. And please press pause as needed anytime during this video. What we want you to be able to do is given the graph of a line, calculate the slope of the line. But before we begin, let's review what we know about slope so far. We know that slope is a number that's usually represented with a fraction that tells how slanted a line is. Slope is also described as a rate of change. And please press pause as needed any time if you need to, for me to slow down. Lines that slant uphill have a positive slope. Downhill lines have a negative slope. Horizontal lines do have a slope with the number zero, and vertical lines have no slope or the slope is undefined. This is our extended slope definition or description. And we have some examples of rates of change. Again, press pause as needed, resume when you're ready. So back to our example, let's calculate the slope of this line. First, we need to decide what flavor of slope the line is. That is positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Press pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since this line slants uphill from left to right, its slope is a positive number. So I'm going to make note of that, that M, our abbreviation for slope, is positive. Second, pick two points that are clearly on grid points that are on the line. For example, I could pick these two. Those are definitely at intersection of grid lines. These would be a second choice. Third example, I mean, there's several that we could use, several that we don't want to use. So for our example, we'll use these two points right here. We're going to draw a right triangle using these two points and the segment connecting them as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So I drew mine, this with the vertical in blue, the horizontal leg in red. Write the lengths of each leg, how long is the blue, how long is the red, and by counting, I can see that the blue one is four, the red one is 10. The length of the vertical leg, we call the change in y. That is how going from this blue point to this one, y increases by four units. Change in y, delta y. The length of the horizontal leg is the change in the x-coordinates, which in this case is 10. We'll write that as delta x. We also call the change in y the rise and the change in x is the run, depending on what your teacher or, or course uses. Now, recalling the definition of slope, change in y over change in x, rise over run, and so on, we can substitute the values. And since we know that the slope is positive, we can leave that as a positive sign. The rise is 4, the run is 10, and then what we need to do is simplify that fraction. We usually like to simplify it. So in this case, the slope is two-fifths, positive two-fifths. So a couple of thoughts here. We could have drawn the right triangle so it was above the line. And if we did so, notice that the slope would still be the same, four over 10 or two over five. What if we picked two other points that are on the line, like these two? Well, the change in y would be 2, the change in x would be 5, and so we're getting 2 fifths. So it seems to still work. Slope is still the same. So number one, any two points on the line will generate the same slope. 
and that means that the slope is constant along the line. No matter which two points, the slope is always the same constant, the same number. The right triangle can be above the line or below the line. Either way, you still get the same slope. Second example, let's calculate the slope of this line. First decide what flavor it is. Pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since the line does slant a downhill, the slope is a negative number. And so I'm going to make note of that, that M, the abbreviation for slope, is negative. Again, pick two points clearly on grid points that are on the line. I'm going to pick these two. And draw a right triangle using these two points and the segment connecting them as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. I'm using blue for the vertical leg and red for the horizontal leg. Write the lengths of each leg. So this is four units here and six units here. The length of the vertical leg is the change in y, which we usually call delta y, Greek letter delta. We also call that the rise. The length of the horizontal leg, six, is called the change in x, usually written delta x. We sometimes call that the run. Recall the definition of slope. Change in y over change in x, rise over run. We can go ahead and substitute the values. And we know that the slope is negative. Don't forget that because it is going downhill. And the rise over the run would be 4 over 6, so negative 4, 6, which we simplify to be negative 2 thirds. Slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. Example three, calculate the slope of this line. First decide what flavor of slope the line is. Pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since the line is horizontal, its slope is the number zero. Well, that was easy. But let's look at it another way real quickly here, just to verify that. I can pick two points clearly on the grid, which I'll pick these two right here. And I can't draw the right triangle, but I can calculate the change in the y coordinates and the change in the x coordinates. The rise, the change in y going from this one to this point right here, well, pause is needed, resume when you're ready. Well, change in y is zero. Why does the y coordinates do not change at the same y coordinates? Go ahead and try to figure out the change in x coordinates. I will give you a hint, it's not zero. The change in x is one, two, three, four, five, six units. And so now substituting into the formula, rise over run, change in y, ch over change in x is zero over six. And that simplifies to the number zero as we got before. So you can either know that the slope of horizontal lines are zero, or you can do this change in y over change in x, your choice. Fourth example, calculate the slope of this line. First decide this flavor, pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since the line is vertical, the slope is undefined, or we say that the line has no slope. Again, that was pretty easy, but let's look at it another way quickly. Again, I'm going to pick two points clearly on the line and on the grid. I can't draw the right triangle, but we can calculate the change in y and the change in x. So go ahead and figure out the rise going from this point to this point. Pause as needed. Resume when you're ready. The change in y is five units going from this one to this one. Now calculate the run or the change in x. Pause as needed. Resume when you're ready. 
change in x is zero. The x coordinates do not change going from this point to this point. So going back to our definition, rise over run, five divided by zero. We remember the division by zero is undefined. So the slope of the line is undefined, or we say that the line has no slope, as all vertical lines do. Now you try some. Find the slope of this line, pause as needed, resume when you're ready. We're just going to show the answer, by the way. Slope slants downhill, its slope is negative, negative 5 over 2, negative 5 halves. Find the slope of this line, pause as needed, resume when you're ready. This line slants uphill, so it's positive. Rise of 6, run of 2, 6 divided by 2 becomes 3. So 3 over 1 or just 3, positive 3. Find the slope of this line. Pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since the line is vertical, the slope is undefined or it has no slope. You'll notice that this is the y-axis. The y-axis is a vertical line with no slope. And the last one, find the slope of this line. Pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Since the line is a horizontal line, its slope is the number zero. The slope is zero, as all horizontal lines are. We encourage you to view video three about slope next, which is calculate slope from tables. If you need to pause, do so. Otherwise, this is the end of the video.